Hello ladies and gentlemen, Comrade Danky here, and today's story, it's uh, just going to be about my history, my story, little baby Danky as a baby baby boy. Um, let's see, where's a good picture I can just put up? Here we go. So, um, yeah, my story is kind of weird, alright? I was born and raised in the Southern Baptist Church, a very conservative, hyper-religious Christian church. And when I went to school, I got bullied. Uh, you know, I was kind of a dorky kid. I had glasses. Uh, and I tried to be everybody's friend, including uh, the kids who were just assholes. And... Uh, they treated me like shit, and the teachers didn't do anything because they didn't give a shit. So, uh, needless to say, uh, little little baby Danky was pulled out of school, and I was homeschooled from pretty much throughout middle school and high school. So from the fifth grade through all the way through the twelfth, and this was a strange experience for me because homeschool in the US at least is a very very seldom talked about phenomenon uh, what this is is a form of schooling in which your children of course are in your home uh, but there are also external outside homeschool exclusive classes that you can sign your children up for but uh, it the law is the laws vary from state to state in some states you don't have to be registered with uh, what they uh, term an umbrella school but in my state state of Tennessee we did so I was registered under a certain umbrella school it was a small academy private Christian Academy out in literally out in the middle of nowhere um, I never saw anyone who went to this academy. I never met anybody who went to this academy. Um, so when I graduated, I literally didn't know anyone I was sitting next to in line. I never met them before in my life. I didn't know anybody's names who was being called. And to make matters worse, when they called my name, they say son of so-and-so, daughter of so-and-so. They say daughter of so-and-so, my mom and dad. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm not going to show my face because I don't want you fucking chud honkler boys to find me in real life and kill me because that, you know, and I'm guessing that's probably how I'm going to die. One day I'm just going to be walking around uh, and some honkler boy is going to come up behind me and shank me and he's going to go honk honk motherfucker and then run off. And the last thing I'll see before I die uh, before I bleed out is uh, his stupid little clown nose and he goes burp, burp. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I would I would demand like when I went up to the pearly gates I would say God you better fucking send me back to earth so I can haunt this little bastard for the rest of his days I'm gonna make his life miserable dude <laughs> but anyway going back homeschooling is weird it's seclusive uh, not so much at first. When you're in elementary school, it's kind of cute to be a homeschool mom. Uh, a lot of the homeschool moms enjoy the, uh, bonding with their kids, uh, teaching them, you know, their ABCs and their basic maths. Things get a little dicey, though, when middle school kicks up and the attitudes start. The hormones start kicking in. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen... It's rough. I didn't have access to the internet. I didn't have access to porn. I didn't have access to girls. There was no girls I could flirt with and fantasize over. It was literally just me and my imagination. That's all that's all Danky had. I didn't even fucking have hentai back then. It was it was miserable. It was, it was miserable. And to make matters worse, and this is no fault of my mom, by the way. I want my mom to know she is a cool lady. She's not responsible for any of this. She did what she thought was right. 
she did what she thought was right. We were going to the Southern Baptist Church, and everybody was telling her, Oh, you're sending your kid to an evil public school where they teach evolution? That's horrible. Those heathen kids and non they call they call anyone who's not a Christian non-saved, by the way. You're saved if you are a Christian. You're not saved if you aren't a Christian. So there's, oh, he's going there with all those not saved kids and those secular kids, and they're they're learning about the evolution. And so in a way, my mom was sort of shamed into homeschooling me. So the bullying thing was just sort of icing on the cake. And at first, I really, really liked it, you know, and and I still did. I still saw the benefits of it even like up until the end because it gave me time. It gave me an opportunity. But I can't speak. It gave me an opportunity to learn about things kids normally don't read about. And I credit this time with my exposure to like history because in 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 class all right in put in and and this was my experience in elementary school all right we didn't talk about anything involving world history it was exclusively american history and every single year we started back over with the pilgrims so we only ever really got up to like the preface of the civil war it was never like <laughs> it never really went beyond that all that much so uh, needless to say, I was learning about the Hittites for the first time, the Mongols for the first time, the Aztecs for the first time, and my little danky brain was blown. Um, I acquired a very good uh, uh, appreciation for history, and I still have one to this day. I probably would have become a historian uh, had the job prospects not been so poor, um, but I went uh, the, uh, with a science field instead. But uh, that is to say, uh, I gained an appreciation for history, and I think that's pretty much carried on to this very day. Uh, it also gave me time to do really cool uh, uh, PE activities, namely Taekwondo. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of kids did dodgeball. A lot of kids ran, ran track. I got to kick people's ass in Taekwondo. And, you know, I did get my ass kicked at first, but I got pretty good at the footwork and I got pretty good at the blocking and, uh, you know, don't want to brag hashtag, uh, I can kick, uh, you know, higher than my head. So, you know, step to me, Shaquille O'Neal, I'll probably be able to hit you in the, in the lower belly or something. <laughs> I'll try not to hit you in the balls. That's, that's a cheap shot. Uh, I, that actually happened to me in Taekwondo. I got, I got spin kicked right in the fucking balls and i didn't have a cup because that literally like never fucking happens unless you're dealing with some like fucking white belt that doesn't know how to fucking fight he just spin kicks you right in the nads and it oh my god i mean i thought i was dead i thought i was dead right then but i'm alive uh and i still got to go through my homeschooling years and a lot of people ask me, like, well, what did you do for, like, tests and stuff? Well, uh, it was my mom's responsibility to make sure that I was doing my uh, tests, getting grades on them. It was ultimately her discretion what to report my grades as and who to report them to. That being said, she was fair in her assessments. I remember her giving me Fs. I'm, well, not, not F's. I wasn't that bad, but I remember her g telling me, you know, you got to do this over again. She would let me have some do-overs, but n never on like, uh, you know, never on like a big test. So, you know, it was, the rules were a lot more lax. I was able to study stuff that I wasn't able to study. You know, it needs no, it, it, it needs no saying that I'm a fucking weeaboo trash. All right, I'm weeaboo trash. And because I'm weeaboo trash, I wanted to learn how to speak Japanese. But I wasn't like all the other weeaboo kids that wanted to learn just like one or two words. No, I wanted to learn how to like read and write it and speak it like fluently. I'm still working on it, by the way. But, uh, you know, Watashi wa Nihongo wa Hanashi desu. I mean, I speak some Japanese. I speak basic Japanese. It's not good. It's not great, but I can speak it. And I can understand it at a basic level. Don't want to brag, but these are some of the benefits that I feel like homeschool gave me. 
now to some of the detriments and I've already kind of mentioned it but the isolation was so crushing at times the only other kids I had to be friends with were these fucking other homeschool kids and and I'm sorry but I guess now it's the time to, to really expose what homeschooling is all about in the United States and America okay let me blow the lid off the whole fucking thing and expose the dark underbelly of this culture this culture of homeschooling it is a front for child religious indoctrination hyper religious hyper conservative childhood indoctrination I'm not saying that all homeschool families do this but I'm saying the industry as a whole is catered to this you had people like Ken Ham famed creationist uh, guy who who uh, wrote answers in Genesis guy that wrote uh, or uh, a dude in charge of the stupid fucking creationist museum that uh, I went on a f I almost went on a field trip to it uh, back when I went to the you know the Southern Baptist Church we had a field trip not even I wanted to go to that shit uh, back then uh, so we had guys like Ken Ham go to homeschool conferences around the country and tout his curriculum say buy my curriculum that says that evolution is a lie the world's only 6,000 years old global warming is a myth scientists lie to you it's all a big conspiracy trust what the Bible says literally and uh, be sure to buy every single last curriculum I have and Ken Ham ladies and gentlemen is just the icing on the cake there are dozens and dozens and dozens of these homeschool tailored authors and private Christian school tailored authors and Amish curriculum tailored authors, Amish and Mennonite, that are hyper religious, hyper reactionary, hyper conservative. Um, there are history curriculums. There are, of course, science curriculums, social studies curriculums, but there are also reading curriculums where all of the books are uh, patriotic themed or paint a revisionist history of southern uh, slavery, etc., etc., Christian propaganda. And so what this did and what this is doing to children all around the country is it is indoctrinating them with this hyper religious hyper conservative worldview that is key tailored to cater to the sort of fascist elements that we are seeing rising up within the american right this day we saw elements of it dur during george w bush we are seeing it evolve and manifesting in more sinister ways under trump and i personally have witnessed these people who I grew up with and who I trusted as authorities, namely all these Southern Baptists, you know, my youth pastors, my pastors, uh, people that my parents knew, people that, uh, you know, I, uh, people whose uh, children that I went to Sunday school class with, they are all Trump supporters. All of them. They are all Ben Shapiro followers. All of them. They retweet Jordan Peterson. It is a continuum, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute continuum. Christianity, conservatism, incel, uh, and red pill culture, uh, men's rights culture, ultranationalism, and fascism. It's all a continuum of chuddery. And I grew up and inundated with this. And it wasn't until I got the internet and I started doing my own independent research, stumbled upon the YouTube atheist community, uh, put on my fedora, you know, stop believing in God, read all about evolution. I got really into science and evolution at that point. Um, just trying to find out the truth, how the fucking world works, because I had been taught lies for my entire life. I had been taught bullshit. Okay? It's not my parents' fault because they were indoctrinated too. They believe this too. I mean, can you can you really fault them? The ones I hold accountable 
for my indoctrination are folks like Ken Ham. All right? Folks that wrote these curriculum and pushed them on on people who just didn't know any better. You know, my, my mom was a busy lady and she sacrificed a lot to be a teacher uh, for us for homeschool. And she took a whole lot of shit from a whole lot of people. Uh, and she got almost no thanks from it except uh, uh, except from us. No support except from us, her kids, because... You know, we understood this was our opportunity. I didn't want to go back to normal school. I have been, I have been fucking bullied. You know, I won't go into detail because it's fucking, I don't, I just don't want to think about it, but it, it was horrible. All right. It was fucking horrible. Uh, I probably would have wound up uh, killing myself uh, if I had kept on going to school. I mean, no joke. That's how bad it was. So, I mean, <laughs> You bet your bottom dollar I didn't want to go back. So, by the time I sort of like fell away from Christianity and became a fucking fedora wearing neck bearded atheist, I was in my last year of high school. And this was probably like my most miserable because I was just lost. I lost everything. I was graduating. I had no friends. The only friends I had were, uh, you know, I told them that I was an atheist and they, they, I told them not to tell anybody because I didn't know how my parents would react and they freaked out and they told every, they literally told everybody. So, you know, I, I have sympathy and I'm not saying that I share the same struggle that gay people do, but I have sympathy with gay people who are like forcibly outed or something. They tell somebody they're gay in confidence, and then they fucking blab it to the whole world, uh, and then your parents find out. Yeah, that's not fucking fun. And imagine that happening like just weeks before you go off to college. So you don't have time to really mend that wound before you go off to college. You know, luckily, my mom's a cool person. She understands now, but at the time, she was very upset. Um, everybody from my old church... You know, the youth pastor, people that they tell you to look up to and that you can confide in, they fucking ignored me. I mean, they tried for a while to, like, get me to come back to church, but they weren't interested in, like, trying to to help me. They weren't interested in, like, trying to help me. They were only interested in trying to get me back so I could put some fucking money in the offering, uh, in the coffer for them. And that's the, the, the hard truth. Um, you know... It's, I had no fucking interest in going back to their bigoted, reactionary, anti-scientific, anti-intellectual church where they tell you, literally, don't think. I was told this. I was told by my pastor, don't think about it too much. You're thinking too much. Uh, just stop thinking and start having faith. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that that's bullshit. You know, I, I asked him, just show me just something. Show me something. Something that I can latch on to as, as, uh, as a way to, to justify my belief in the Bible. And he would say, well, what about Noah's Ark? And I would say, well, science says Noah's Ark's a bunch of bullshit. And he would say, well, do you believe what science says? And it's like, yeah, because of X, Y, Z. I had, here I am, a fucking like 15 year old having to defend myself in front of all these fucking grown men. You know, who went to seminary. They're just hitting me with fucking scripture. And I'm fucking hitting them back. Because I read what uh, uh, what Mark Driscoll says, who's a biblical scholar. So I read how the Bible really fucking came to be. And I just fucking shred their arguments apart. Because they're idiots. They're all chuds. If you've gone to seminary, you've fucking thrown your money down the toilet. Because guess what? You don't learn jack shit. You certainly don't learn how the Bible came to be. But I digress. Uh, this left me sort of like traumatized. All of this shit. Losing my friends. You know, I went off to college. Um, and I didn't know anybody. I was all by myself. I felt alone. Uh, I didn't know where I was going to go from there. I was just sort of this aimless fucking neckbeard. 
you would have seen me back then, you would have seen me, no joke, I would have had a neck beard, because I, I did, my first semester of college, I literally fucking had a neck beard, I want to go back and shave myself, uh, I didn't have a fedora and trench coat, thank god, but, I had a neck beard, uh, I was very uncomfortable, very shy, I just went to class and went straight back to my room, I didn't really talk to anybody, I mean, I had a lab partner, and I was, I was friendly with people, but I just, I didn't go to any of the campus activities, I just kind of put my head down, did my classes, uh, and it was that way for a while, I finally met some cool guys, and I moved in with them, uh, we got an apartment together, and that was awesome, that was really, really, you know, those were the, uh, the good days, I think, uh, you know, just living with them, we play video games, we get back from our classes, I crack open a cold one, we play some video games, you know, and uh, we, we, we watch some anime, just, you know, goofy shit like that, we watch Adventure Time, we had people over, we'd play cards, we'd play D&D, we'd play Magic the Gathering, uh, you know, just, we would do fun stuff like that, we would romp around, um, but then something weird started happening to me. It started, like, I started feeling nauseated, like, every fucking day. And I know what you guys are going to say. Oh my god, Danky's pregnant. No. I'm, I wasn't. I wasn't pregnant. Alright. Uh, I'm very fertile, but I wasn't pregnant. So. I was feeling sick to my stomach, like, every fucking day. I thought I had gotten appendicitis or something, because I, I had, like, this feeling. Like, my... My abs were like, were like really sore constantly in just this one spot. It's like a stabbing pain. So I thought I had like appendicitis. I was going to fucking die. Uh, and then I just started feeling very, very fucking weird every time I would leave my apartment. I would try to go to class. And then one day when I was driving back home for the weekend, uh back back to memphis for the weekend it was raining really really bad on the on the interstate and my i got super fucking scared because i couldn't even see the guy i couldn't even see the lines on the road it was raining so hard uh and the and the dipshit in front of me wouldn't put his uh, his fucking lights on so i couldn't see where he was and he was a silver car so i couldn't see jack shit my visibility was zero i was flying blind and i was scared as fuck and my hands start going numb, my face starts going numb, I start going numb, I start thinking what the flying fuck is happening to me, I'm freaking out, uh, thank god that there was like a freeway a few miles, or a, a, a rest stop a few miles down uh, the freeway, because otherwise I probably would have wound up having an accident or something, because my fucking hand, I was losing my motor control, my hands, uh, that was like my first fucking panic attack. And this started happening like almost every time I, I tried to go to class. I I would you know try to go to class, and it wouldn't even be a test. That's the thing. That's the thing that really uh, busted my balls. Is that it wasn't a test. Like it it would just be like a lecture or something, and I would just get this feeling like I'm gonna fucking throw up and pass out. I'm gonna throw up and pass out and faint, and everybody's gonna see me, and everybody's gonna fucking laugh at me and make fun of me. Uh, and I'm going to just embarrass myself and it would start this vicious cycle where I would get really fucking scared of like freaking out and wigging out in public. And so that would make me like freak out and wig out in public. And it got to the point where it was so bad, like I wouldn't even leave my fucking apartment. Like I would leave the apartment. I would start feeling sick. Uh, it was bad. Uh. I had like, there was a day where I had a test and I was like, I'm either going to have to fucking uh, nut up and go take this fucking test or I'm going to fail the class and I'm going to have to withdraw, uh, which means that I will have to repeat these classes over again in the future, which means I'll be at school even longer, which will just sort of delay my uh, or, or prolong my suffering. Because at that point, I was just ready to graduate with the rest of my friends. But 
all of my friends started graduating all around me one by one. And I think my lowest point was moving out into my own apartment. And all my friends moved out, my roommates moved out, and left me uh, pretty much all alone. It wasn't their fault. I mean, that's just how these things go. But uh, yeah, I didn't really have anybody. I was living in a studio apartment by myself. Uh, and I would get so anxious that I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't keep anything down, so I was losing weight. I was fucking paranoid, you know? I, I, uh, and, uh, my AC broke, so I was really fucking upset and, and, and crazy about that. Um, my, I, I got to the point where I couldn't go to class. I was trying to take this very, very hard class, and it was super intimidating, and uh, I just kept uh, missing class after class because I would get so anxious, I would just feel so horrible, I would miss the labs, and it really fucked me up. And this uh, pretty much culminated in me getting sick. I got really sick, I got like the flu. And they gave me like a prednisone steroid pack. And they don't tell you this, folks, but uh, if you have anxiety, don't take prednisone because it will fuck your anxiety up uh, shit creek without a paddle. And that's exactly what happened to me. I took the prednisone. I literally fucking started hallucinating. I looked up at the ceiling on my apartment and I started seeing geometric patterns. Uh, I felt like I was dying. I was like having a panic attack. I felt like I was going to faint and I was seeing fucking patterns. And the scariest thing about this is that prednisone, you can't just fucking uh, stop taking it. You have to like wean yourself off of it because if you just stop cold turkey, uh, you'll get even sicker. So I had to fucking just endure that for days. I was a fucking mess. I couldn't go to class uh, and so I just decided to like withdraw from from that school and I took like a year long break okay took a year long break I went back to Memphis sort of got my bearings straight and uh, you know I went to therapy I started cognitive behavioral therapy and I got on medicine I already started taking SSRIs Zoloft uh, you know it's not it's not the best it's not the best medicine out there. It's got its own side effects, uh, you know, but I don't want to bore you with the details of that. Needless to say, though, it's got my anxiety to a point where it's now manageable. Like, it's still, it's still a fucking problem every now and then, but it's not something that's on my mind constantly. I don't have to worry about it anymore, all right? And I have an emergency supply of benzos that I can take. If I really get fucking zonked out, like if I have to go on an airplane or something, leave the country, if the if the <laughs> if the if the Tennessee government tries to find me or something, they try to track me down and put me in Guantanamo. If the U.S. government tries to put me in Guantanamo, I'll just flee the country and I'll go to Cuba or something like that. Um, you know, but yeah, it was a fucking struggle, but I managed to sort of overcome my agoraphobia but while i was agoraphobic i had a shit ton of time to digest a bunch of political literature and political videos on youtube and it was in that uh, in that time period i discovered marx i discovered lenin i discovered marxist leninism i discovered all these cool bread tube guys i learned about socialism and class struggle and i became the class conscious tanky boy you see here tanky danky boy you see here today um and that's my story you know i'm a fucking weirdo homeschool kid that was a fucking neck beard in college anxious neck beard who uh is now a fucking tanky who has a weird video game who has a video game character as it has as his uh emblem on youtube and i make shitty fucking videos using OBS, which is a program that a child could use, uh, you know, he makes shitty fucking videos spreading his, his garbage content, his garbage propaganda. So all that said, that's me in a nutshell.